What's going on guys, WhiteFox1225 here, and today we're talking about some information that was found through data mining. We have the very first details on player housing in the Elder Scrolls Online, and also what a possible Vardenfeld DLC will look like. Now I take zero credit for this, I found none of this, just some awesome people on the reddit did. The main person who typed up the article I saw was Dominoid73, so big shout out to him. But let's just talk about all the news we have and all the leaked information. Let's start with Vardenfell. Vardenfell is part of Morrowind and it was the main location of the third Elder Scrolls game, which was named Morrowind. Morrowind wasn't a huge game for me, I much prefer Oblivion and Skyrim, but it's still a great game and it's going to bring nostalgia to a lot of people. It's still really popular among the older Elder Scrolls crowd and it's cool to see it come into the Elder Scrolls Online, so let's talk about all the details for the zone. First off, this zone sounds massive. I'm just going to go over all the content we have, and it just sounds to be huge. So we have 6 Delves, 6 World Bosses, 12 Way Shrines, 1 or 2 4 Man Dungeons, 3 Set Crafting Stations, 14 Points of Interest, and then last up, we have 1 Group Dungeon called the Cradle of Shadows. That name seems to be a reference to the Oblivion Plane Evergloam, controlled by the Daedric Prince Nocturnal. She's actually my personal favorite, I was hoping she was going to show up in the Thieves Guild questline, but she did not. But this is a possible link to her, and maybe this dungeon will explore her plane or something like that. Let's just take a minute to talk about how big this zone actually is. When you think of Hughes Bane or the Gold Coast with the Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood DLC, those zones only had two Dells or two group bosses. Now we have six of each with this upcoming DLC. And that's just incredible. This zone looks to be massive, especially because when you think about it, most of Morrowind took place on this island. And if this whole DLC is going to be... Uh, sorry, if this whole zone is going to be on this island, that would just be incredible. That would be like all of Skyrim coming in one DLC. I'm not sure if it all will come. It's possibly going to be broken up. Zoss tends to do funny things with the zones, make them weird shapes. But we'll have to, I guess, just wait and see. But to me, this sounds massive, and that's definitely a reason to be excited. And of course, with this zone being part of Morrowind, we'll see lots of reoccurring areas, places to revisit, and that'll bring lots of nostalgia. I always love comparing places from the Elder Scrolls Online to another game, and I'm really excited to do it in this game, and I'm sure, again, lots of people who love Morrowind will get lots of nostalgia, and that's always a great thing. Let's move on and talk about possible stories for the zones. Personally, I think this will have to do with some Daedric Prince. Again, the 4-man dungeon did reference Nocturnal. I would really hope this would be a Nocturnal-based DLC. Personally, that would make me really happy, but it's also possible it'll take place around another Daedric Prince. Keep in mind that it was hinted at that maybe other Daedric Princes would invade Tamriel at the end of the main story, so maybe this will be a continuation of the main story in a way, and a new Daedric Prince will attack Tamriel. I guess we'll just have to wait and see in the end, but overall guys, this zone looks to be really cool, and I'm really pumped for the DLC. Let's move on and talk about something that I've been waiting for for so long, I'm so excited about, and that's player housing. We officially have the first details, although they're not coming from Zoss. So, of course, take everything here with a grain of salt, but it would seem to me that we have the first details on how player housing is going to work in the Elder Scrolls Online. When they were doing the data mining for this zone, they found out that it said it had three player houses in the zone. And when you take that into account, it kind of seems like player housing is going to work by living in pre-made homes around the world that are instanced on the inside. So let's say I really want to live in the Rift, which is actually my favorite zone, and I want to live in Riften. Well, there's a house in Riften, but me and 20 other people live there, let's say. But once I walk in the front door, it's instanced, and no one can go in except me and maybe some friends that I invite. A game that this worked really well for was Grand Theft Auto. They had this system with their apartments. And I could see it working in the Elder Scrolls Online. I know a lot of people wanted to customize the outside of their houses and make giant compounds. But this is going to work really well. It looks like we're going to have a couple houses per zone just because this new one said it's going to have three. I would assume that each zone in the game right now will have a couple maybe except for Cold Harbor. But who knows, that one might have some houses too. And then you just pick one, maybe you can pick more than one that you want to live in, and hopefully you can customize the inside and make it your own. I would really love that, otherwise I'll be a little disappointed. But overall I'm really pleased with how it sounds like housing is going to work. It's going to work kind of like a traditional Elder Scrolls game, except maybe a few people share your house, but in the end it doesn't matter because like I said, it's instance on the inside. But it really is crucial for me that you can customize the inside because that would be a big part of the DLC, being able to have that customization and have fun playing around with different designs for your house. 
Another thing I want to add is it does seem that we'll have a dungeon coming pretty soon called the Ruins of Mazatan, and that's going to take place in Shadowfen. Not sure if that means we're going to get a new zone for Shadowfen, I kind of doubt that. I'm guessing that this is going to be a new dungeon put in an existing zone for Shadowfen, and that it's going to come with player housing, just so that if you don't really care about player housing, you still have some PvE content to do. I think that's probably what the dungeon was made for, but I could be wrong. Let's talk about release dates. I would be shocked if player housing doesn't come in quarter 3 sometime in the fall. I'm willing to bet that it will. And then for quarter 4, I'm not sure. You know, it could be Vardenfell, but I kind of doubt it just because they previewed a lot of stuff before this, like the Clockwork City, and then some other adventure zones and PvE zones. I have no doubt that Vardenfell is in development, but for it to come quarter 4 when they haven't even mentioned it before, that would surprise me, but at the same time, we didn't know about the Gold Coast until a few months ago, so I could be wrong, and it's really up in the air, I don't think anyone can really guess. But we'll know in a few months, I'm sure, after uh, player housing comes, we'll start to get details and we'll have a better idea of what's going to come. But that's pretty much it for the video, guys. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. We're always covering ESO news and other MMOs and RPGs on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.